Today, every day, small cap investors visit Agoracom knowing this is the day to discover the world's next great company, to have their dreams come true. That's why I take to the open road, to find them, to tell their stories, to engage them, to bring them to life. Because they want to connect with you from your office, your phone, your home, anywhere. Agoracom, find your dream. Welcome to Beyond the AGM, a presentation of Gorecom in which we speak to small cap companies about information that's going to be presented at their AGM. With us today, I'm really happy to have from St. George's Echo Mining, present CEO, uh, Vil, well, I call him Vil, Vilhamor Vilhamson, and Dr. Helen Salmon, who's one of the most knowledgeable academics uh, that has specialized in Iceland geology. Guys, welcome to the show. Thank you. Hi. Hi. So the topic here in this segment of the uh, Beyond the AGM is discussing the state of mineral exploration in Iceland. So Dr. Salmon, you know, maybe you can start off by giving us uh, what your views are on that. Okay, well, gold has been, um, it's been assayed in Iceland. It's in the system. You've got all the proponents that are there to generate um, targets for this because you've got the hydrothermal systems, you've got a rifting environment, which means that all the, um, all the fluids coming up, the containing the metals, will get to a, quite a high level um, place in the crust because it's, it's a low sulfidation epithermal um, deposit. And this means that it's between, it can be between 50 and 300 meters for the, for the gold to be precipitated out. So there's a sort of boiling zone, which is what we want to hit. And basically all the gold is precipitated out as it starts to cool out of these hydrothermal systems. So with the rifting, because we've got the two continents, we've got Iceland, that's uh, the European continent and, uh, and the American continent, and it's, they're sort of pushing apart. And as they're pushing apart, they're flexing um, these dilations within the volcanics that are there. So we have these very hot, um, relatively hot, I should say, some, some people might take that wrongly, hot springs, um, that is pushing all these uh, saturated mineral fluids up through the system. And as it cools, it's being precipitated out. Now, gold, as we know, is quite a heavy mineral. So what it's doing is it's one of the first minerals to be precipitated out. So it will be a, a quite a high dilation vein um, part of the system. So it, it, as it gets, as it goes upwards to a, a narrower vein, then of course the gold is already precipitated out. So we really need to find out those areas. And nobody really has sort of looked into the um, Icelandic exploration because everybody thought it had to be, it was like orogenic. There's the mantle plume um, issue that's going on at the moment that it's causing an awful lot of controversy about where the gold comes from. Well, let's, let's talk about that because there is a debate yeah. uh, and uh, especially here in Canada and Toronto uh, yeah. with most conservative ge geologists that say it's difficult, if not impossible to make yeah. discoveries in volcanic active settings. Vil, maybe you want to add your thoughts there about, about that question. Yeah, well, uh, I, I think it's a bit of a misunderstanding because we're not actually searching in the active settings. We're searching in uh, areas which have already cooled down, like uh, Helen was uh, explaining to, uh, how, the, how the gold is actually uh, in, in the settings here. So we're not in the active volcanoes. We're in uh, settings that have already cooled down. So yes, it's, it's relatively easy for us. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so you're saying that the... This this controversy or debate uh, isn't even a debate because you're talking about conservative geology, talk about in volcanic active settings, whereas we're not there to we're not there to begin with. No, no, we're in inactive. Uh, uh, well, it was active, you know, some thousands of years ago, but sure. it's not active anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Talk to us about uh, Dr. Salmon. So either one of you, Bill or Dr. Salmon, talk to us. You mentioned hot springs earlier. Uh, yep. Talk to us about hot, uh, hot springs and how it either limits or helps the exploration work. Um, we need to be peripheral to the hot springs, really, because the gold would already be gone 
by then. It might be precipitated, disseminated in those, in those fluids and it will be put out into the silica sinters, which means that as this fluid, we get the silica that comes out as well, which forms the quartz, which the gold will be in. But as it gets near the top of the surface, it evaporates basically um, and sort of disperses. That's what the springs do. So we need to find out, we need to have uh, the area where the fluids are still fluid as opposed to a gaseous. So the volatiles, all the carbonates and the silica and the um, sulfides, they're sort of escaping from these fissures and we really need it to, to be capped. And that's what um, is good about being the volcanoes being old now. So they're not continually being, um, uh, continually being erupted and losing all of that uh, capping. So, Vil, that helps your exploration work at the end of the day? Yes, it does. And the, the only, uh, uh, what do we say, the, the, the only place where, where, where this is actually not happening, where we're, we have an active system, is in the Reykjanes area. And, and that, that, that's, that's uh, a completely different, different story. Yeah. But, um, I've seen maps where the government of Iceland has reported grades in excess of 100 grams per ton of gold, kilos of silver uh, in geothermal wells. Is there a plan to tap into that potential? Uh, and, and what's the science behind the plan? Well, that's exactly what I was saying. In, in the Reykjanes area, we have a phenomenon called black smokers which uh, are here in Iceland on land, which is the only place in the world where you have black smokers on land. And what you were referring to is a study that was done by Dr. Ritis Harladotir a few years back. And there was a geothermal well that was used to uh, create energy and uh, hot water for the local munip municipality. It, it, uh, on a regular interval, it got clocked. So the hole got clocked and uh, they, it needed to be cleaned out. In order to try to figure out what was causing it, uh, uh, Dr. Vitis was called in and she did studies on it. And uh, the short of it, the result was uh, probably one of the biggest finding of, of, of minerals in the system. Uh, and this is actually a very interesting uh, thing and, and uh, we are looking into it. Uh, it's, a, it's a complicated uh, venue, it's a, it's a, but if successful and if we will be able to tap into it and we'll get licensed. And this is something that can take years, but we are working towards it and we will, will be doing so. Uh, you can yes, almost say that you would have opened a tap for, for minerals. So yeah. it, for, for example, would be impossible to make a mineral resource out of it because it would be unlimited, basically. Wow, unlimited. You don't hear that very often, Dr. <laughs> Sam, and you, you kind of share that same, that same sentiment? Yes, it's an unknown entity and I, I would be very excited about it because as I say, normally they've just started looking into black smokers uh, in the ocean and uh, getting all the mineral deposits out of those as well. So that's what they're looking at. So this is a really exciting time. If, we, if it's on land, at Reykjavik is, then um, it, it's, it'll be wonderful to be able to be uh, partaking in that because it'll be an interesting study, very interesting study. All right, on that note, let's switch over to a couple of questions that we have from the shareholders in the shareholder Q&A. Thanks to all the shareholders who posted their questions to the uh, uh, St. George Verified Forum on Agoracom. Um, you're, you're once again showing how powerful it is uh, when, when management and shareholders engage each other. Uh, first question is from KM. How far along are we with the drill program in Iceland? Secondly, do we have permitting yet for the deeper holes? Well, uh, uh, the short answer, we don't have the permitting for the deeper holes yet. Uh, what we're doing now is we're fin finalizing the conclusion of the uh, agreement, whereas we, we purchased the uh, property outright. Uh, we are allowed to do the shallow drilling. And what we are, we have people on the ground as we speak uh, doing uh, preparation. And, and uh, we've just uh, sent assets and got results back that will uh, actually uh, help us plan the shallow drilling uh, program. So, um, yes, I mean, we are, we, are, we are hoping to be able to do it as, as, as soon as uh, our counter partner uh, in the transaction uh, comes back and we can uh, conclude the transaction, then we can start the drilling. So we're basically waiting for the other party. Uh, 
and um, I'm hoping to uh, be able to conclude the transaction very soon and uh, then everything gets started. And it's also worth noting on, uh, because I know some of the shareholders have been uh, asking about the drilling program and, and, and et cetera, and when it will happen, that in Thormostal, uh, the best time to drill would actually be December, January, February, because then we have frost on site, which means that uh, water isn't an issue and, 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 and uh, getting over the area is very relatively easy. It's, it, it is a uh, very easy access. It's short from Reykjavik. And the good thing about the Thormastal prop, uh, property is we can operate there a full year. So uh, once we have uh, full custody over the project, uh, there will be interesting time because we will be putting uh, 24 7, 365 days of work on it. And we, we, so which we have been limited until now because of, of the arrangement that we had with previous owners. Right. So you may, that, that probably kind of answers the second question, but I'm going to ask it anyways, because uh, Falky89 posted it. So I want to make sure they know we post the question, which is, will we still see drilling results from Iceland this quarter? Well, uh, this quarter ends in end of September. Uh, so uh, just out of practicalities with, with, with the labs, the turnaround on the labs is usually anywhere from three to four weeks to six to eight weeks. So, I doubt that we'll see results before end of September, but I would definitely hope we will see uh, results in Q4. Dr. Salmon, uh, yep. the last word is to you uh, because our shareholders do get a chance to interact with Ville and we'll have much more opportunity to interact with, uh, with Ville in the future. So last yep. question to you, and maybe in more of a layman's explanation, what, okay. do, you <laughs> what do you want people to know about, and I'm not going to geology, but Big picture, uh, what do you, what's the takeaway here for shareholders of St. George with, with respect to uh, mineral exploration in Iceland? Well, it's, it's really, it's, it's in its initial stages. There's an awful lot that, uh, more that can be done. Um, we can, at this point in time, we know the gold is there. We know the systems are in place that gets the gold up to the near surface and that can be deposited there. That, that's proven. But what we have to try and do is delineate the deposit. So basically at the end of the day, what would be nice to do would be to get a detailed geophysical survey done as well so that can try and pinpoint and target minimally the, the drill areas that we can do. So that would be great. But there's no reason not to think that there's the gold that's there is is not being deposited in 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 you know bigger numbers in in more um, in you know widespread fashion because at this point in time it's an unknown entity but there's something there it'd be lovely to see it it's very unpredictable with the fluids because you have to try and gauge where they're going to go you're going to have to do the offshoots and as they go into the host rock how they react with the host rock. We've got all the, we know that fluids go through it because we've got the minerals there, the zeolites that fill in the um, oils. They can sort of like, um, they tell us that the fluids are flowing through and there's pathways for them to get there. So we need to try and limit this to a, a, a deposit that we can define and we can go out and work at. So that's what um, it would be great to do. And I think, you know, it's a wonderful opportunity. It's, it's, unknown really and I think it's uh, very brave to go and do it and um, I wish everybody well with it. Thank so, you very much Dr. Salmon. Thanks for those concluding comments. Right. Uh, Ville, you know you're going to be involved in two or three of the other segments so I'm yep. sure you have a lot more to say but I want to thank both of you for you know really That's participating okay. in this concise uh, uh, edition of, of Beyond the AGM for you. Thanks to both of you for joining us. Thank you. Okay, that's fine. Thank you very Thank much you. for inviting me. Thank Goodbye you. Bye, Bye, guys. You're welcome. And stay Bye -bye. tuned for the next segment of this St. George Beyond the AGM uh, video series.